You're listening to the BHP Podcast, proudly presented by bowhunterplanet.com. Join the hunt. Support for this podcast is provided by Cold Steel Knives, Scott's Archery, and check out Respect the Game Podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Bow Hunter Planet's Podcast 2020. It's myself, Dave Thomas, along with Kevin Conlon and Bob McGee, and my nephew, Brandon Thomas, chilling in the background, listening in. Except- and uh, so welcome to 2020. Yeah, yeah. Pretty exciting. Another, yeah, I can't some, believe we made it another season. Had some nice holiday <laughs> year. <laughs> got, year. Got through some nice holidays. Gained a lot of weight. Back, <laughs> back on track. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's about uh, we're about there. So uh, we're missing a couple people tonight. Uh, Tim, Jamie, and um, uh, are at the ATA show. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Down in Indianapolis. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. What we're seeing so far from them and what's going on so far. I know they've met with Burris. Um, and they've met with Elite, um, and tomorrow I believe they're meeting with uh, all the rest of the companies. Um, so they had some weird rules, like where you can't, if you're pressed, you can't get on the show today on the floor, uh-huh. which, uh, you know, we'll have some conversations with them about this later because, you know, I saw a lot of people on the floor today. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So, but yet we were stuck in a room. So there's going to have to be a little conversation about the rules here because I'm not following, you know, how can some people be on the floor and others not if we all do the same type of media? Right, you know? right. That'd be my concern. They actually put them in that room with the tables and stuff, huh? Yeah, we're in a, they were in a room with uh, just some tables. A couple other brands were in there that I know of, you know, that do kind of kind of what we do. No one really does what we do, but, I mean, there's a couple extent, right? But my whole thing is, like, why do we have to sit on the – Why why can't we just – like as long as we agree not to go in and film anything or get crazy with the fo- you know bothering people right because right? Right. I mean Botech would have had us come in, no problem they said come hang out at our booth just hang out I mean right. <laughs> that's my point like why can't you go sit there Elite Archery was like oh you know come come see us at this time and I'm like um, I don't think they can come see you you have to come out of the show right yeah but, no nobody wants to do that well that's what I'm saying and yet I still saw people at other booths talking on Instagram is that because of the higher their, their ups? tag wasn't a press the higher press ups tag. with their the ATA tag was some sort of, I have no idea but we're gonna find out from the high ups of the ATA well, after what, this one what were their tags what was uh... I couldn't see it's hard to see on, on uh. the, you know but they have something you know I, here's the thing. I get it. I, I just want the rules to be fair for everybody. That's all I'm saying. Like, if, if Botech wants me to come to their thing and film that day, why can't I do that? Especially if some other people are doing it now for PSC and other brands, which is what I saw, okay. you know, watching. So I just think in my head, like, all right, well, that's a little bit weird, but we'll deal with that as time goes on. Conversations yeah. with the ATA, and, you know, we talked to Matt before, so hopefully we can have this conversation openly with him and understand what the situation is, you know, like how, are, you know. Yeah, there's you know we're all doing the same stuff, trying to help the we're, same. I was goal gonna say here. we're we're trying to help them. It's not like we're well, we're there hawking stuff. Well, that's my point. It's not even like we're there trying to sell ourselves. I mean, we're just going to try to cover an event. But anyway, enough of uh, whining. So uh, so far the show, they haven't really seen a lot. It's my point. So they haven't really got a chance to go on the floor. Um, so we don't really know a ton. But you know, our friends in the industry are posting things. So we have posted some of that. Uh, to our Facebook page, look like Bowtech launched a new Eva Shockey bow, which looked pretty cool. Um, they they launched today when the media, media wasn't able to be present. That's my point. So this is where I get a little bit un, not understanding the situation. So yeah, you have a lot of launches happening today, right? A lot of things happen today, right? And there's technically no media supposed to be there, but there was media there. How does it get Not put? us, but like right. certain groups were there. So I just got to understand how that works. And, you know, like, uh, you know, these are, like I said, there'll be conversations that need to happen because it makes no sense. PSE launched a lot of things and there's really no press there, but maybe one press company who maybe they invite you there. It's fine. I get that. Right. But like, wh- you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't it make more sense to have the press there when you launch something new? Yeah. So I guess it makes no sense the first day. If you're going to do a buyer day, maybe do it the last day. <laughs> yeah. There's no one around the last day. Or do it, uh, you know, two, three days prior or something. Yeah. Where it's just or or even do, like, certain hours. Like, yeah, this is going to be, you know, we're going to do our launch between 10 yeah, and noon. good point. We're going to do our, yeah. so between 10 and noon, yeah, you guys can come out and film and do stuff like that. and yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, like I said, it's there's a lot to learn from everybody's perspective. Yeah, it this, just seems but, totally illogical that... Uh, well, that's, you know, again, 
the deal it's cool for the dealers i get that but when i one of my issues is that i saw hunting shows going live showing product i saw um other um uh, bow hunting media type, you know, going live, you know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. doing videos, not a ton. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I saw an overwhelming amount of videos being done, but if I go back now and look at some of these pages on these other, these brands, I mean, how many are they going to have, you know, is it one, is it 50? Is it, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, <clears throat> but anyways, it just have been nice to get some info on the first day. That's all, you know? Yeah. But that's, out of the way now, so we got the rest of the weekend, right? Yeah, so they'll be there tomorrow, so they'll get to see everybody tomorrow um, and uh, hopefully get to talk to our friends in the industry. That's the most important thing is just, you know, getting the exposure for them and, uh, you know, giving you guys, the listeners, something to, to learn about, you know. I mean, we, you know, we strive to have something cool for you guys. Obviously, it's a hunting, you know. Yeah. We all love the same stuff here. It's not like we're any different than anybody else. Um, and we just want to have the same fair chances everybody else to hit the floor and do things and get this content for our viewers is my point you know right you guys are waiting for this stuff shouldn't have to wait you know it's that's to me that's not right so not not if other venues get the data that's right if, if everybody is to sit in that room if all those media groups are in Make the room with fair. Us, that's fine you know but do i have to buy a booth what do i have to do right what is different about what's happening that i'm that we're doing you know yeah so these are important things i mean it's if we're going to play the game it needs to be a fair, you know, just at least got to know, know what to do, right? Yeah, What's the options? Know. So, um, anyway, moving on. We, uh, we have bow reviews, so we're still working on a lot. I just finished, we finished a 2020 recap, but that was without any bow cubs who didn't send in to that point. So we missed the bears. Uh, we missed the obsessions. We missed, um, there's a lot we missed to be honest, to be fair. So there will be a part two to that video coming out. So right now, Bob and I just finished the obsession bow and, um, <laughs> And we'll move on from that. You know, we'll keep going. So as the Bears come in, I'm trying to get Prime in. I know people have been asking about Prime. been working on that, trying to make a deal with Prime to get some of their bows in here. Even How's that going? Even though they're 20 minutes from our, our studio, um, I'm still trying to work. It's going not really great, but I'm working on it. You know, I'm working through one of their marketing firms. Um, we used to work with G5. That's the thing. Yeah. It's not like we never worked with them. We right. did do some work with them in the past, um, and I'm hoping we can just rekindle that. So... We'll see. I, I really want to get Prime on the show. I, I feel like people are always asking about it. You know, they always want it. So it's in our backyard. Yeah, that's the other thing that makes it frustrating. <laughs> we never got Martin yet. I'd like to get Martin on the show. It's been a long time getting Martin on. Where are they at? Mm, I think they're still in Walla Walla, Washington. Okay. But um, I haven't really done a lot with Martin. I mean, we did something with them a few years back, like six years ago now or something. But different owners, you know. Uh-huh. That's the thing. It's been through so many hands, you know. I remember when I was young, man, Martin. Was... Oh, me too. Martin was, was the like, bow. The cheetah, right? The cougar yeah. cheetah? Yeah. They had a couple. They were so cool looking compared to, like, some of the other stuff out there. Martin was the bow. Yeah. We, uh... We were just sitting in our studio tonight talking. We were filming one of the bows tonight, and then we were just talking about how these headphones hurt our ears. So, sorry, Timmy. <laughs> Spend some money. <laughs> we're going to start testing some different ones to see what's a little softer. Yeah, I think that's important. Test them first it's a good before idea. you buy them. You know, buy one. Or I'll just get, like, four different ones. Maybe that's what we do, and then just return the ones we don't like. It is what it is. That's why Amazon's yeah. amazing. Just flip them around every week. Well, yeah, just see what we like or don't like. Yeah. Just uh, we'll I mean, these don't really here. bother me that much. Well, that's but, what I'm saying. Some people again, might be I fine with these. I don't know you what luxury you know. is. Yeah, I may <laughs> I may get in that Cadillac and say, "Whoa, <laughs> you don't know what this luxury is." Very is. nice. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, goodbye to Krishner. So Chris, thanks for your help, man. Yeah. And Chris, yeah, if yeah, you haven't heard, Krishner has decided to leave and. Haven't really had a chance to talk to him too much about it, but mainly I think it's due to his um, his uh, career in, in uh, Target. You know, I mean, when you you want to be a Target shooter, there's a lot to that business. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you know, companies that sponsor you don't want you really on all these other brands. You right. know, so I, I totally understand his perspective. And yeah, and you know what? He's got kids. He's got. A job, I was just gonna say he's, he's got, got a lot, lot on his plate. You know, his kids are getting to that age where you're always busy with them. Yeah, and uh, I I get that. Him know. and his wife are running the uh, the youth archery program through Oxford Schools. Yeah, they're doing. He's got a so whole lot much, of stuff. So much great stuff. So yeah, uh, thanks, Chris, for all your hard work. Um, honestly, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. And uh, you know, I I do feel sad for the viewers. He was t- Chris brought a really good aspect to the to us and to what we do for Test Lab. 
and uh, it will be missed for sure. Uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to do what we've always done and uh, hammer away from an amateur perspective the best I can. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm not going to know as much, obviously, as Chris does about certain things. But, uh, you know, we'll backfill the best we can. Again, yeah. we've never showed you guys a video in order to tell you you have to buy this product. We've only always showed it as a as this is a demo, a review, a version that you can look at. I'm not telling you what's best or what not to buy or what to buy. In fact, I try to really keep my opinion out of all of it if I can, just because if a bow is really bad, this question came up to, uh, on our Facebook page the other day. It says, has there ever been a bow you didn't like? And the answer is yes, there has been bows we didn't like. Uh, the Anderson Bow Company, I did not really care for too much. They're a small company out of business today. And I don't think, I think it says a lot of volume here. Mm -hmm. The bows that we didn't like actually went out of business. So there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Parker was not that great, to be completely honest. They were okay. Their crossbows were nice. Their compounds were standard compounds. But the last one, the poison, was so heavy that I, it blew my mind that they thought they could get away with the bow. Yeah. That heavy, yeah. Um, and they finally did do something right, in my opinion, with the design. I thought it looked good, but they needed to shave off the weight. I mean, the it, was, weight. it didn't help them. And then going in, I mean, that was that was supposed to be their breakout that compound. Was their, I'm right. coming back to the compound, but it didn't work out for them. So wasn't yeah. that bowl like five five something five ninety nine? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the pound oh poundage. It was like no, it was like four point eight or four. Yeah, it was a it heavy was bowl, the heaviest scale I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, it was way too heavy. You know, it was way too heavy. Well, the other thing, too, is, and, you know, we've lately, the last few years, have just got into more of, you know, a lot of these companies will send us their top-of-the-line stuff because they want the a good reviews, you know. Yeah. But now we got companies that say, okay, you know, we're going to send you this bow, and, you know, it's a better price point, and we really want to see what's yeah. like. And <clears throat> some of them have been... I mean, pretty amazing. I would suggest that the only one I would say was not the best bow or competes really with some of these others would have been the Parker. Because yeah. that bow, like I said, it just it just missed some marks on a couple things, you know. Yeah. But the rest of these bows, and I'm not saying it wouldn't kill a deer. It would. And it will it would absolutely have no issue killing animals. There's no I mean, again, mm -hmm. this goes back to opinions and if for me, that one didn't do it, right? That'd be right. the only one. I, I was, you know, I'm always trying to be nice and political, yeah. and you know, here it is. This is what I you think, get. I don't know. But, if, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, no problem. Started with, uh, like, Bear started sending us some of their price point bows, and man, oh, I unbelievable. hunted. I hunted with the one and took a deer down. It's amazing. I, I actually loved that bow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Was it the G3 or whatever? G2. G2, yeah. yeah. Cruiser G2. And all these companies have, have come out with, you know, price absolutely low price bows. And not saying that they're cheap bows. Yep, and they're just well, great products. We saw today. Uh, Elite launched a bow. That's a Did fantastic we say $4 .99? bow. Four ninety nine. Is that what we said? Yeah, it was super cheap. Is there a five ninety nine or four ninety nine? I want to say it's five ninety nine, but look. still for the Elite. The thing about it is, like for example, like that G two Cruiser that I hunted with and took that deer down. It was one of their like price point bows, you right? Know? But it's, Four ninety nine, mm, ninety nine. Yeah. It was the it, ember. The ember. That bow was so much better than the bows I used to hunt with when I was younger, and I was buying. Oh, I was yeah. buying the good stuff, you know. This bow, guys. Okay, let's just talk about Elite just for a second. Outstanding company, doing some amazing stuff. Elite just launched at the ATA show the Ember. Okay, this is a bow that is thirty one and a, and a quarter axle axle. It's three point six pounds. Wow. 3.6 pounds. Let me repeat that. Not 4.6. 3.6 pounds. Six and a quarter brace height. 15 to 29 inch draw lengths. And 10 to 60 pounds. I was going to say 10 to 60 pounds. Not 70. 10 to 60. This bow looks to me like a little bit of the option series when they had that. The option. Um, but at 4.99, like... <laughs> Is that, that is, is that a bare bow or does it come with this is this is a bare bow. That's yeah, their yeah, bare yeah. bow, but, but that still, price, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like if I was buying a bow today, I would buy this bow. How do you I think? haven't shot it yet, but I'm telling you right now. It's if, it's gotta be a great this, bow. I was, I was telling the guys today when they were down, driving down to ATA about this bow we were talking that when we knew this bow was coming, they sent us an email beforehand and said, Please don't say anything, it's just coming out so you know, be ready mm -hmm. to talk about it. If you look back at Elite, if you go back five years, right, anything between now and five years ago, and it might even go further back, right, whatever, but 
all of those have had an amazing draw cycle, right? And yeah. a back wall. Just amazing. They've done a great job. Well, that's job what Elite's this. known for. If you're telling me that's going to be on a $500 yeah. bow, I'm telling you that would be my first pick this year. Yes, if I was going to buy a bow with my own money tomorrow and I was going to spend my hard-earned money, 500 bucks for an Elite, that's unbelievable. I got to see this bow. I can't wait for this bow. pounds? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and even it's... lightness comes into play. Wow. You're getting the best of all worlds. Here's the thing, guys. We've, we talked about a little bit on the show. Now, I've said it before in videos. When a bow is like 4.5 pounds, 4.4 pounds, the Matthews bows were a little heavier in that range. I think the bow techs are in that range. You have to offset that weight somehow. And usually you can make that happen in your sight, right? But like Bob likes to shoot an HHA, and those aren't the lightest sights. They're That's actually a heavy sight. they're heavier. They stick out, and they're a great sight. Nothing wrong with that. But this bow would be a perfect fit for that, right? Because yeah. now you lower the bow weight, or a Hoyt, right? A Hoyt carbon bow. You lower the weight, or a Bowtech carbon icon, right? Yep. You lower that weight point, and now you can offset that with a heavier sight, heavier rest, whatever. And don't get me wrong. You could just go as heavy as you want. People are stronger than me. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. Again, it's a preference. I like light bows. But light bows do have some disadvantages. They can move around a lot. You know, when you're trying to draw on a deer, they get, you get, when you're shaking a little bit, there's nothing to help offset the shaking, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. again, that's why I always tell you guys, it's all about you and what you like and comfortable. My recommendation is always to, to at least pick up a bow, draw it, get a feel for that back wall, get a feel for the grip. Those two things to me are like number one and number one and two right there. And then from there, design, colors, looks, branding, you can look into all that stuff. But mm-hmm. let's be honest, all these bow companies are amazing. You know, yeah. Bowtech, Hoyt, Matthews. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time on the BHP Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>